G'day, how are you going? Mr. Bennett here. Uh, today we're going to go through Newton's first law of motion uh, and we're going to start from a historical view um, and work through from that. And I mean, when you learn the Newton's first law of motion, you don't need to, to learn it uh, word perfect. It's about the concepts of the of the law itself. All right. So um, when you when you're sort of having to, to reproduce the definition, uh, you can do it in lots of different ways. As long as you've got the key elements right, then that's fine. So if we start with Aristotle, a philosopher, and a lot of famous scientists were philosophers, um, his, his initial theories of motion, uh, you know, based on observation, were actually wrong. Right? So it took 200 years before Galileo actually got the motion right. So he was the uh, founding father, I suppose, of motion, I suppose. So every object has a natural state, okay? So that was uh, Aristotle's idea. In a natural state, earth elements, like things like stones, apples, things that you can see, are drawn to the earth. So he was obviously talking about gravity as the force there. So heavier objects are more strongly attracted, so they fall faster. Now we know that's actually wrong, all right? So that's what Aristotle's idea. In reality, it doesn't matter if it's a brick or it's a feather, if you neglect air resistance, they will fall at the same rate. All right, so that's the other force that will change that scenario. Um, Aristotle talked about the forces either being violent motion or natural motion. All right, so pushing and pull type objects, uh, they are what we call violent motion. And if the cause is removed, uh, in other words, you stop push pushing, then objects return to their natural state. And stop moving so if you push a brick yes obviously due to friction it's going to stop slightly isn't it depending on the surface but eventually it will stop um, but in terms of um, Aristotle his his was based on observation and not quite not quite correct there are some elements that are sort of correct we'll just look at those so here's what Aristotle thought about if you shot a cannonball right then what he was saying is the unnatural motion would first stop and then it would fall. So in other words, the unnatural motion would mean you're pushing it out there and then the natural motion would cause it to fall to earth. In reality, this is what actually happens. It does a, it follows a parabolic mo, uh, parabolic path. All right. So um, that's one bit of evidence to refute what Aristotle, um, his ideas. So if you pull, the pull of gravity is obviously larger on a bowling ball than a baseball, yet they actually fall the same speed. Uh, and we talk, just talked about a feather. So a feather, if you neglect the air resistance, will fall at the same rate as a bowling ball. All right. So Aristotle's inclines, okay, downhill, he talked about the speed increasing, going uphill the speed decreases. We would accept that, wouldn't we? That's fine. Uh, we know that's what's going to happen. If an object is actually rolling, uh, what Aristotle was saying, does the, does the speed increase, does the speed decrease, or is it constant? Right? So it's a natural earth state, so technically this thing doesn't want to be moving, does it? So Aristotle's idea would be that this thing would stop. Okay. In reality, yes it will stop eventually because there will be frictional forces, but it will keep rolling for a, for a period of time. Okay, again, uh, when we're looking at this thing, object over here, generally it will go to the same height, or maybe just a little bit below the height, initial position, final position. Okay, Aristotle's idea would be that this would actually stay stationary, right, because it's going to stop, isn't it? That's its natural state of motion. We know that it actually will roll down the hill and roll for a certain amount, depending on how high the hill is. So the definition that I want you to, to use and understand is this one here. Okay, so an object at rest remains at rest. All right, an object in motion remains in uniform motion. Now, what that means, it will be moving in a straight line at the same speed. All right, or it's got constant velocity. Unless a, a force, now quite often I'll put in the, the word external force acts on the object. All right, so the, the, the key elements of this are that an object will, if it's at rest, will remain at rest. An object in motion will continue in its motion unless there's an external force. 
Now this only happens in what we call an isolated system. An isolated system would be an example of maybe doing throwing something in space. So if you, uh, if, I don't know if you've seen your new film Gravity, okay, but that film Gravity, um, you know, has some really good examples of Newton's first law. All right, so if, like, the concept is if uh, you know you want to um, s sort of stop yourself, all right. If you've got a force pushed on you, then you're going to keep moving forever and ever and ever. And in that movie, when they have to go to uh, the other, other sort of, um, I think the Russian centre, once you do, what you've got to do is get your um, yourself moving in that direction. And once you're moving, you don't need to use any fuel. All right, so you'll just keep going in that direction forever and ever and ever. All right. So Newton's first law, so what the key elements are there, so if it's not moving, right, no net force, it will stay not moving. If it's got uniform motion, it will continue to, to move if there's no force acting on the object. So here's an example that you might be aware of if you've been on a train. So when you're on a train, when the train stops moving, let's say if it stops quite suddenly, you're going to keep, you're going to get pushed forward. You're going to move forward, aren't you? You're going to feel that... Uh, that force. When uh, the, sta the train is stationary, you're also going to be feeling like you're stationary. No problems. When the start, when the train starts to to take off again, you feel like you get pushed backwards. All right, and that's to do with you wanting to to remain in that state of motion. All right. So initially you're moving, so you want to keep moving. Right, you've got to actually brace yourself and stop yourself from moving forward. Um, when the train takes off, right, you actually want to stay stationary. In fact, the tra it's a train that's moving forward, not you really you moving backwards. All right. So in this demonstration, what's going to happen here is once the green trolley uh, stops, then the blue trolley wants to keep going. It's going to move forward. Once the blue trolley stops, then the red trolley is going to... So it's going to go bang, bang, bang. Okay, that's the way that will move in terms of law of inertia. Now, you might have seen a demo like this, and I'll, I'll do one in class. We'll do something like this. But if I yank the tablecloth out of the way, the beaker, if, certainly if it's heavy, its law of inertia says that it wants to stay stationary. Right. So what happens there is if I don't have a lot of friction between the tablecloth and the bottom of the beaker, then the beaker should stay pretty well where it is. And if I could exert that external force really quickly, there's not going to be a lot of friction that happens there. So therefore, I should be able to pull that tablecloth out of the way very quickly. All right. So that's another demo. Now, in the video you watch with Paul Hewer, the law of inertia does this demonstration. He actually does some of the other ones as well. Right? So if I've got a heavy ball over here, right? if I pull slowly, which string's going to break? Okay, And you'll see that it's going to be the upper string that breaks. Okay, I'm pulling slowly because you've got the force that you're pushing on the string might break that string, but you've also got this extra weight happening on that string there. So that should mean that string will break. If I do this really quickly, what's going to happen is this string here uh, is supporting this weight here. This big heavy cannonball won't really want to move. So if I yank that quickly, I should break that string. All right, and that's to do with the law of inertia. So net forces, okay, so when you are adding forces, so let's say if you think about an example like where you might have a car and you need to push it. So if there's only one person pushing it, it's pretty hard to push sometimes. Uh, if you have two or three people pushing, then you know the amount of force that you're putting on it feels like it's a lot easier to push. And that's because the, the net forces are adding together. So if you push with three newtons there and five newtons there, the overall effect is really pushing with eight newtons. Does that make sense? All right, so Newton is the, is the unit of force that we actually uh, use. So example over here, if I've got 5 Newtons, 5 Newtons pulling, that would be 10 Newtons. If I have 5 Newtons pulling, 5 Newtons pushing, that's going to be 0 Newtons. 
if I have 5 that way and 10 that way and that might be an example of frictional forces and you're pulling something against friction the overall net will be a 5 newton force that way alright so in this particular case 3 newtons that way 3 newtons that way we've got a balance force all right, so therefore it's not going to move. All right, this little demonstration, I won't do this, but you can understand the concept. Okay, this scale on this side over here reads in 5 newtons. This one here reads 7 newtons. So these are the forces that you feel, you know, that's pulling that thing up with. All right, so here we've got an iron mass of 10 newtons. We've got a stick which weighs 2 newtons. That's 12 newtons. These two add up together to give you 12 newtons. So therefore, we have to have balance, balance of those scenario. All right. So um, obviously, if this is what we, we 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 see this happening all the time, we put an object on a bench. Let's say we've got a gold brick sitting on a bench. Okay, this bench must support push back with 100 newtons worth of force, and that's getting pulled down due to gravity with 100 newtons worth of force. So if these two forces balance then the brick will just sit on the bench nicely. If they don't balance, then what will possibly happen is the brick would fall down through the bench. That could happen. That is probably a realistic scenario. Or if that force pushing up was greater than 100 newtons, this would float off in the air. And we, we know that benches don't push up with more than what the object will push down with. So we know that's not really a, a realistic scenario. All right, so... I hope this sort of uh, helps you um, get a get a feeling for Newton's first law of motion. Now, where we will be applying this in our application is to, to look at cars and how cars work and car safety. So things like airbags and seat belts and all that sort of stuff. The law of inertia is a really important law that we need to try and overcome. And there's been a lot of technology put into car manufacturing to, to make sure that we, we lessen the forces of the person in the car due to um, the law of inertia. So we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in, in, in class. Um, I want you to have a go at the, obviously, your tutorial questions in here. Uh, you certainly need to come up with your own definition. So I'd like you to write that and, uh, and put that up on Padlet. Okay, so, but it needs to be something that you're going to remember. All right, so it's not going to be word perfect, as I said before. It needs to be something which has got the essence of the law of inertia, which is object at rest stays at rest. Object in motion continues in its uniform motion as long as there's no external forces acting. Okay, so they are the key elements to that. So how you write that. I suggest that you probably try and use uh, formal physics terms because right, you need to develop your formal writing in physics as well, using those sort of terms. All right, I'll talk to you in class. Bye for now.